Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we're set for our first major uh, conversation. The Independent National Electric Commission, uh, Nigeria's electoral umpire, has expressed a divergent view with uh, Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari on the impact of attacks on the electoral bodies, offices, and facilities in different parts of the country and its effect on the commission as far as the elections coming up in the country are concerned. Now, while the president said uh, the electoral body had no excuse not to conduct a credible, free and fair election despite the attacks as the funds it requested had been made available to it, Einik uh, noted that its funds were overstretched by the attacks as it would have to rebuild and replace the destroyed facilities. Now, Buhari on Friday assured the United States of America, he's been there for the U.S.-Africa summit, that the attacks on the offices would not stop the conduct of next year's general elections. The president spoke in Washington, D.C. Uh, during a conversation co-hosted by the United States Institute for Peace, uh, the International Republican Institute, the National Endowment for Democracy, and the International Foundation for Electoral Systems. However, INEC on its part has called on the federal government to intensify efforts at protecting its facilities and property nationwide to ensure hitch-free polls. The commission had also lamented uh, that from 2019 till date, it had recorded a total of 50 attacks in 15 states of the federation, uh, describing the attacks as worrisome and unfortunate. The commission said it will go the whole hog, however, to deliver credible polls next year. Now, the president on one hand is saying Anik is ready for the elections. Governor's done everything it needs to do, but Anik is saying, see, we still have some challenges. Now, will the attacks on Anik facilities, you know, hamper the forthcoming elections? Does the government need to do more, commit more funds to the commission ahead of the elections or not? Joining us uh, this morning to do justice uh, to this topic, we have a guest already standing by, Lera Barry, or Lera Barry Samson Nundu is the director of security at INEC headquarters in Abuja. He will look at the security aspect of this and others as we go on. Uh, Ms. Sindhu, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. We met also our Professor Isa Sage Fage, and once he joins us, uh, we'll put him on, on online. But uh, 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 Ms. Sindhu, let's start with this. Um, what are your thoughts uh, as, as INEC now on these increasing attacks? Who are these attackers and what are their aims? Uh, the last we had was in Imo State, where the state offices of INEC were set, were set on fire. Um, so who are these attackers, and what are they after? Thank you very much, and good morning. These attackers are not from Cameroon. Neither are they from uh, Guinea-Bissau. They are Nigerians. They live with us. They live in our community. Nigerians know them. And until Nigerian state security has everybody's business, today is an egg. Who knows whose agency it will be tomorrow? And so Nigerians should give credible information to the security agencies so that at least things can be nipped in the board. And like Annex said, we have gotten 50 attacks since uh, 19, 2019 to date. The last one in Imu. Thank God some people were caught. And we believe that the security agencies are going to use every power at their disposal and every information they have to track these people down. There are people that are sponsoring them. These things are not just because of election. I think there is more to it. Nigerians should rise up. They should rise up and not just condemning it, but ensuring that it is stopped. The reason is that funds which will have been used for other critical social infrastructures will not be channeled back because take it or leave it, election must hold. INEC is prepared and has done everything it can to ensure that deliverables are delivered. Sensitive and non-sensitive materials are delivered. INEC is ready. They are prepared and they are waiting for the whistle to be blown to take off. The dates and the timetable have been out. And as I speak, INEC is in the process of implementing all the decisions and all the processes that they have taken. And so we need Nigerians 
to support us. Okay. Uh, but let's also look at the back and forth with INEC and uh, also the presidency or the president. Well, the president is saying that, yes, despite the attacks on, you know, INEC offices across the country, that should not deter the commission, the umpire, from conducting a free, credible elections in 2023. But on the other hand, INEC is saying that uh, the funds have been overstretched because of these attacks. And so uh, there's need for them to rebuild and replace all of this uh, uh, facilities or, I mean, all that has been destroyed. What do you make of the back and forth? Can you hear us, please? All right. I think the best thing to do in this circumstance is to look at what the I chairman said. Oh. Difficult. For the, it will be difficult for the commission to replace all the things that have been destroyed. That's what the chairman said. We are ready. We are prepared. If the attacks are stopped today, I neck is good to go. But what the chairman said is, the attacks should be stopped. Because these things, most of the things we need, if the sensitive materials are destroyed, is going to give us stress to get it back. And not things you can just go to the open market and procure. There is a procurement process. And if these things are destroyed, it will, dis it will distort the timeline that we have given ourselves to conduct the elections. INEC is not saying the funds have not been released. But what the chairman is saying is, if the attacks continue, the funds which have been released will be overstretched because we have to get new buildings, we have to build it, and in case where we cannot do it because the exigency of time, we to hire new buildings, and this takes Paul. All right. We seem to be having a, a, a network uh, challenge with you, uh, uh, Mr. Endo. If you can hear me, please. Uh, uh, but while, we, while we we're trying to get him back, we would uh, at this point say welcome and good morning to Professor uh, uh, Sani Fage. Ka Professor Camilo Sani Fage is a renowned political scientist and uh, professor with Bayero University, Kano. Uh, Professor, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, Professor Fage, please, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Thank you very much for your time, Professor Fage. Uh, uh, we have a situation where the Independent National Electric Commission is hinting uh, that they may be cash-strapped uh, if the uh, incessant attacks on these facilities around the country continue. Uh, the president says that the government has done the needful to ensure that they are ready, uh, and he believes, the president believes, that INEC is ready for the election in his presentation to the international community. Um, should we be reading much into this as a, a clash of views between INEC and the president, because, I mean, the president has been away while some of these attacks have been going on. Or should we, um, you know, c calm down a bit on, on the narrative of uh, a clash of views between the president and, uh, and INEC? I, I think it's both. On one hand, um, we should read meaning uh, in it, and on the other hand, uh, we should calm down. So I would rather we pass up on calm down and be optimistic that uh, the elections will hold, uh, be it as it may. Um, because if we are to start um, giving in now, I think that will be a bad thing. For one thing, uh, it will encourage the perpetrators of this act to continue. Uh, secondly, um, it will dampen the spirits of many Nigerians. Uh, that uh, there is insecurity, therefore most of them will not be willing to participate. So I think that is uh, the reason why we should come down. Uh, on the other hand, we have to read meanings to it. Um, not that, uh, to me, there are two contradictory statements. 
Uh, but uh, there are issues that uh, uh, both sides have. In terms of uh, the financing, it is actually true that um, what the president said, that uh, INEC received all that it asked for. Uh, I think that is uh, something positive. But on the other hand, these challenges are unforeseen. They are something that have not been planned for. Even if in the INEC budget there are contingencies, I think the contingencies might not be able to take care of uh, these mounting challenges that uh, is gradually creeping up. So I think the next thing is we take what INEC said seriously and uh, then enhance the security of our INEC offices and facilities and the security of the country as a whole. So I think we can manage the two and still go ahead and get uh, uh, the elections done. So, but in a case where, um, I mean, the funds are not enough, I mean, we know that there's been a budget that's uh, it's been released. INEC is saying, hey, we have the funds and what have you, but, you know, with the... Um, recent incident that we're having, the attacks on facilities and the offices across, it would definitely mean that there's need for us to have, you know, a replacement. And the next question would be, in case, you know, we're not able to meet all of that need, what's the implication? What does that mean? And do we also have enough time? Does INEC have enough time, you know, to replace all that has been taken? What's the implication for the elections in 2023? Um, what, what it is uh, like the implications are that one, um, it is going to disenfranchise uh, quite a number of people in the affected areas. Uh, secondly, I think it will have psychological effects uh, on uh, voters and INEC and the country uh, at large. So uh, I, I don't think these things could mar the whole election unless it goes out of uh, hand. Um, the areas that are affected, uh, legally, I think even though they are disenfranchised and so on, uh, I don't think the, the number will be enough in such a way that it will fall for the postponement of the elections. Because that will be the most dangerous thing for us to do if we say we are going to postpone the elections, even if the, the challenges are there. Because you know, by uh, our constitution, uh, by 29th of May, there has to be a new government. And uh, the Electoral Act actually states how long it will take, about 150 days uh, before the new government, you must have election. So I think um, probably we are not talking. If this thing continue, maybe the election will have to, uh, must continue. And then the affected areas, uh, then they find uh, within the laws uh, what um, is to be done. If, for example, the affected area's vote is such that it will uh, make a difference in terms of uh, the winner and loser, meaning it is a significant percentage, then perhaps they will organize uh, something in the area within the ambit of the law. But what I'm saying, Basically, uh, these are serious implications, and the only way out of it is to face it squarely. Now, like, uh, if it were offices, and it should, uh, and, uh, you know, expedite action, uh, get, uh, you know, temporary places, uh, like uh, rent uh, places for it to have its own offices. And then other materials, I think, uh, where you have... Um, like the machineries and things that are affected, uh, if they can be replaced quickly before the time, or if they cannot, then in nearby areas where you have, uh, uh, let's say, extra, you can mobilize uh, the gadgets there, uh, even though it uh, will raise some questions. But I think that I, I get a feeling that uh, I think might have uh, a certain contingency plan uh, to foresee that uh, uh, similar situation. So they are in a better position to see how they will uh, mobilize resources and personnel in such a way that the elections have not been crippled in the uh, areas affected.
All right. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to you, uh, uh, Mr. Lebarindu. Um, as Professor said, ANEC may have you know, contingency plans. He's also talked about the effect and the impact on of visa tax on, on, on the forthcoming elections and even on any cash crunch on forthcoming elections. Um, uh, Mr. Andrew, if you can hear me, uh, can you hear me, Mr. Andrew? Yeah, I'm hearing you, Lana. Yeah, yeah. In terms of equipment uh, and, and facilities, uh, w w what exactly is the effect, the impact? Are we seeing these attacks, you know, uh, you know, damage, you know, uh, uncollected permanent voter cards? Do ANEC, does ANEC have in machines like Beavers machines uh, and others that have been destroyed? Maybe uh, you have uh, ballot papers and all that. What exactly has been affected by the over 50 attacks, like ANEC has said, in recent time? Thank you very much. As I speak with you this morning, if the election is to go on two hours from now, Annex is ready with the sensitive materials. None of the sensitive materials have been destroyed. What has been touched, especially in Ugo and part of Imo State, are the permanent voter scan. And like the chairman said, once we get these VIN numbers of these permanent voter scan, they will be printed in three four days. Nobody will be disenfranchised by the fact that these voters' cars have been destroyed or stolen. What the chairman and the commission is saying is if the attacks are not stopped and they continue, it will hamper all the plans, policies, processes that the commission has put in place. However, like the prof said, INEC has its own uh, contingency plans. And that's why I am confident and I can speak that the election will go on as the chairman has said earlier on. We are ready. We are prepared. But what the chairman said is that this attacks needs to be stopped by the security agencies in collaboration with Nigerians. Because if it doesn't stop, it, it might affect the smooth conduct of the elections. Don't forget that most of the materials that are destroyed will need to be replaced. Most of the buildings will need to be replaced. Or in the alternative, we will hire other buildings that may be suitable for the conduct of the elections. All right. Uh, uh, before we go over to Prof, um, uh, Mr. Lebarnu, for, for, for those, you know, cards that have been damaged in the aforementioned states, um, uh, will I like consider an extension of the collection period? That's number one. Number two, um, some are trying to find out, because speculation out there, uh, that I has said, you know, even without your card, you can vote. Provided you have, uh, I don't know what you can, you have, but even without your card, you can vote. No, 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 no. How, how no. true is that? It's not true. That statement did not emanate from INEC. INEC will not say that. It is those who do not want a credible election that say that. INEC has made it very clear that no more incident forms. You either come, and if your biometrics do not show, at least your facial will show up. The only reason why you cannot vote is if you forgot your face at home while coming to the polling unit. And we know there is no way you can forget your face and come to the polling unit. INEC has also made it very clear that we are not using any other thing other than beavers. All the information you need is there. You will be accredited and you vote. And once the voting is over, results will be uploaded to the INEC IREF, where you can just clock in and see what is being done and see the results. It is operation it. You cannot change the result on the road the World Coalition Center. That error is gone and gone for good. There is no question of voting without your permanent voter's card. It is either you have your permanent voter's card or you do not vote. Nobody can use another person's permanent voter's card to vote. I like have said it and that it is a criminal offense to be in possession of a card that is not your own. So INEC is ready. Okay. What, what about, uh, quickly please, the extension of time for collection 
of, of permanent voter cards in affected states? Of, of course, it, 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 it does not, uh, it, it, it belies the fact that once those cards are printed, every Nigerian will be given the right to collect and ensure that they are not disenfranchised. That's part of INEX duty. For those areas where these cards are destroyed and reprinted, of course, they will be given every opportunity, like those whose cards were not destroyed. That's the position. Mm. Well, let's get back to Professor Sani, uh, just as we coast this conversation down. Professor Sani, are you with us? Yes. All right. Uh, away from, I mean, apart from the fact that we have uh, the divergent view between the, the president or the government, on the other hand, with INEC in terms of, you know, funding the elections as, uh, as a result of, you know, the impact of security. Are there other issues that, you know, we should look out for? Are there other factors that might likely, you know, hamper or affect right, the free point. conduct of the elections in 2023? Yeah, I think, I think uh, the major one is the one uh, we are discussing now. Uh, that is the wave of, uh, you know, attacks on any facilities, uh, which uh, will be a source of concern. Uh, because so far, uh, I think uh, from any position, uh, you know, within the space of uh, how many years they have been attacked, their offices in various places about eight times. So I think this should be the major source of concern in terms of improving the security uh, of the nation in general so that at least uh, there wouldn't be puppy cuts of uh, what is happening now. And of course, I'm sure um, many people who uh, will want to, there are many people outside there who will want to copy what is going on. Uh, so I think that will be a major source of concern. And the other thing is, um, as we give attention to, or we pay attention to this issue of attacks, we should also pay attention to the way the politicians are conducting the campaigns, because they too uh, are major threat because the way we see it, there are so so much you know the violence around in terms of uh, you know how the campaigns uh, goes on uh, because so many people in so many places uh, it may not be a national news but we have people being attacked in the place uh, meaning using thugs uh, you know and, and all sort of. Uh, Speeches, and that is that. That is one of the uh, another thing that we should be concerned with. All right, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for your time, and uh, it's been a thrill uh, having you on the program uh, tonight, uh, this morning, rather. Uh, very interesting analysis from you, Professor uh, Camilo Sani Fage is a political scientist, and of course. A professor with the Bayer University Candle. Thank you very much for your time, Prof. Thank you. And uh, Larabari Samsonundu is the Director of Security uh, at the INEC headquarters in Abuja. Uh, Mr. Samsonundu, thank you very much for your time. You are welcome. All right, and uh, we'll take a break. Uh, when we come, we come back, we have more discussions ahead on the breakfast. Please stay with us. <laughs>